Welcome to World Builders Anonymous. Kick that world building addiction and actually finish that novel with your hosts, Vito and John. It is doing well. Though. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> oh, are you doing the intro now? Well, I just, you didn't, so I did. Wow. Is this the first time you've done the welcome to the podcast? Hey, everybody. Mm. Welcome to the Vito and John hour. <laughs> That's not what we called the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I know it's been a couple weeks. You should remember. It's, what it's been a while. About. I don't remember. <laughs> welcome, everybody, <laughs> officially to the podcast. We are World Builders Anonymous, not the Vito and Johnny Hour, although that hey. is kind of what we are by default <laughs> anyway, but um, <laughs> at least it's turned out in the past. We're going to try to keep it a little shorter today, um, just trying to get, get back in the swing of things after a couple of weeks. Uh, after car crashes and Thanksgiving and broken bones and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but we are back in action. Um, I did a little bit of writing this week. Uh, John, have you done any writing the past two weeks at all? A, a little bit. It's been hard, and we'll kind of get into that yeah, a little bit we'll later. That. Yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, it's it's actually been kind of uh, nice to step away for a little bit and kind of come back to it with those fresh eyes. Um, just like when you you know come back to anything after a little bit of time away, you kind of lose some of your... Um, not connection to it, but you, you gain a little bit of objectivity, I think, yeah. to kind of look at it um, from, from a big picture angle and also on the micro scale, um, kind of sentence by sentence and, uh, um, you know, critique it a little bit more accurately and uh, helpfully, I think, uh, by yourself. Uh, almost like you're looking at somebody else's work because you're not as, you know, familiar with it anymore, which is kind of nice. So that's been kind of fun. Um, not that we want to go back and, like, do a lot of editing right now, but it definitely kind of helps the the creative juices kind of flow maybe down a different path than they've, you know, kind of been trying to and maybe not connecting as well or, uh, you know, flowing as well as you'd like them to, um, which was definitely the case for me the other day. I, I sat down to write for the first time in a while, and um, uh, after getting the uh, brace off my finger, I was able to type finally. And um, was able to, you know, get a little bit done and get some new ideas flowing. So uh, that was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, although that being said, uh, John and I were talking a little bit before the podcast. We both feel like um, we, we started this process. If you, if you haven't listened to our first episodes, we started this process pretty abruptly. Uh, mm -hmm. Tried to get to the writing part like really fast. And that was good in, in many ways. It kept us from, you know, sticking, you know, with the world building phase of the creative process for too long and getting stuck with all that, which is the whole point of doing this podcast. But I think we, we both feel a little bit like we didn't quite get the detail in our outlines and plots that we want uh, and yeah. that we feel would be helpful in moving forward. And now that we've both written several chapters, we have a feel for the characters, we have a feel for the world a little bit more. Um, we both think it might be helpful to go back and not redo the plot or outline, but just to flesh it out more and kind of give it more detail and depth, which is not a bad thing. You know, that's oh, no. that back and forth process is probably something that's very healthy to happen throughout the writing process um, while you're kind of figuring things out because it's kind of, you know, you're improvising everything. Even if you've planned it out, there's always room to go back and, you know, f you know get a little bit more detail, especially when you're sitting down to write a scene that you've wrote. Uh, the characters talk to Uncle Jim and decide on a plan of action. <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's that's going to be a, perfect. That's not a helpful chapter description. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it was kind of a placeholder. That's not an actual thing I have, but it's something like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no Uncle Jim in my world. Yeah. Um, but that's there's something like it I have that I'm trying to write the scene for now. And because my ideas have developed through writing a little bit, it now no longer feels like that's enough because I need to know more about what's going to be happening down the, the road that they're going to be planning for. Yeah. And I need to know who they're going to be coordinating with. And now there's another character I've written who is involved in this process, who's not currently there. And so I need to kind of finagle that. And so uh, going, not going back to the drawing board, but going back to add, it's always additive instead of subtractive, yes. you know, as long as it's additive, I think it's a, a good thing, you know? Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that, John? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that I, I need to do as well, partly uh, because it accommodates new ideas. Um, one thing I'm finding, so the next scene that I'm wanting to write and have been wanting to write for a while is the first scene that's not in my outline, that's not in my plot summary that mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. Um, it's something that I looked at and said, oh, I think I could use this in my story right about now. And I think it's going to make things a little smoother to go from one place to the next. But it's not something I planned on or had really 
like plotted out at all. It wasn't in the original plot, this chapter. So I've been trying to write that and it just hasn't been coming out and I'm not motivated to write it and I don't feel good about it. And I'm, it's been hitting me the last couple of days. It's probably just because I haven't, I don't really know anything about it yet. And I've tried to kind of think about it, but I've been doing it, doing that in the context of trying to write it right then and there. Um, yeah. And I think some time to go back and, and place it in the greater context of the story to plot it out, find out what I want, where I want it to go. Um, that's kind of warranted at this point. And, and that goes for this scene as well as, you know, like you said, now that we know more about our characters and more about our story and where it all kind of how it all fits together. It's kind of a good time to step back just a little bit and, and re not, not reformat, but kind of tweak the story to fit what we now know about it. Yeah. Zoom out a little bit and sort of fit the pieces we've made together a little bit more and plan for where the rest of them will go a little bit more detailed Lee. That's not a word. <laughs> oh, <wow>. I'm right. <laughs> you I have a college degree. I have a college degree in music though. So it's, oh, well, no, yeah, sure. It doesn't really apply. Although I know very little about music theory too. So that's no good either, but <laughs> what do you know? I know how to play a violin pretty well and that's that's about it no. that's mostly it <laughs> but no yeah i think a little zooming out is is definitely warranted and like i said as long as it's additive as long as we're you know progressing uh towards that final final draft not a final draft final first yeah. draft product i guess um i don't feel like it's it's too bad and it's a product of kind of how we we started this process i guess like i said um which was very fast um nothing's to say that that you know very um uh, uh, imperfect outline we came up with at the beginning of this process is is now our god that we must like right, <laughs> right. give reverence to and never change ever again or uh, you know mess with in any way uh, and I think that's definitely uh, something we, we should do this week I think yeah for sure and also if it's you know you can talk about it being detrimental to the idea of you need to keep writing it but at the same time if it gets you back into your story then then it's worth it also. Like right now it's hard for me to sit down and write, but if the process of stepping back a little bit and plotting a little bit better and more focused helps me get back in the mood where I want to write more, you know, that's obviously a helpful thing for the story. Totally. And you know, you can do things like give yourself time limits, give yourself like a day where you're not going to write, you're going to focus on the plot. Um, you can give yourself, you know, uh, limits like that to make sure that you're not just in this endless loop of, you know, just, you know, tweaking the story and not actually sitting down to write the scenes. Um, uh, it's something we probably should think about. Uh, I think, you know, I'll, I'll personally probably just take this week, um, and not focus on writing the scene by scene, you know, prose. I'll focus on, uh, the fitting the pieces yeah. I've made together a little bit more. Uh, but then next week, I want to get back to the actual writing process, um, even if I'm not 100% happy with what I've done with the plot, because maybe those scenes that I write, you know, maybe I came up with a new scene, you know, later on down the novel that I want to, you know, you know, uh, bang out a little bit, and and maybe that'll give me some more ideas or something. You know, you always want to be, you know, moving forward and and not stagnating on any one thing. Whether that's and, and yeah. that, that could be the writing, as we're finding out now. That could be writing the scene to scene uh, prose. Maybe you're stagnating on that. Maybe you need to switch it up. So it, it's, yeah. it's you know, this is a process of figuring out what works and uh, what what doesn't work. And uh, I think we're both finding that the mentality of just write no matter what and never go back at all is definitely not the one that's going to get us where we want to go you know right yeah and that's where i guess the idea of that we had with the show of being accidentally educational comes in like <laughs> it was a bit of a, not i wouldn't say it was a mistake because it got us to where we are and we're you know learning from it but the idea of we can just sit down and push through and no matter what just keep pushing through it turned out not to be the best idea and to be fair but, we always kind of tempered that with you know and you can you know it's yeah always yeah, tweak yeah things you know we, we understood that it probably wouldn't be all that we did uh for sure but we're yeah but it's, it's a bit more iterative of a process than we perhaps yeah, originally we're trying, gave credit for and we're trying to find a process that keeps things moving forward that's the most important thing uh, right to keep the ball rolling and and to progress towards that ultimate goal of finishing uh, your first draft so I think that's uh, I think that this will be uh, a step towards that goal instead of away from that goal this week. So that's uh, yeah, kind of what we we decided to do this week. Um, and anything else to add, kind of on that general subject, John? Uh, no, you can go ahead. Um, another thing I was thinking about this week, kind of tied to that a little bit. Um, uh, I was thinking about my 
uh, the inspiration for my story, which was a historical event called the Sicilian Vespers. I've talked about it before, um, but briefly, it's basically in the 13th century, uh, this revolt by the people of Sicily against the Spanish, or sorry, the French, who were uh, ruling the island at the time, and then eventually the Spanish come in to help them, and then proceed to take over for the next 400 years <laughs> to become the <laughs> so new kind overlords. Of so yeah, kind of the cyclical nature of, of power and, and power struggles and that kind of stuff um, and oppression is, is, is interesting to me. And I wanted to write a story that took place during that sort of those sorts of events. But I feel like I've tied myself a little too closely, not even in my plot, but like mentally in terms of my mindset in the box that I'm operating in in my mind, yeah. um, uh, unconsciously really. Uh, but I'm operating too much in that box of that specific historical event. Um, and I, I, I'm not allowing other ideas to kind of um, modify that and kind of add to it, I guess, yeah. as much as I think I should. And I kind of realized that going coming back to the story this past week after taking some time off. Um, I had several ideas that th they fit in it, but they were kind of outside that box a little bit more yeah. that sort I hadn't really considered before. Yeah, sort of limiting your creativity because of your adherence to that yeah, sort totally. of strict line. It's good to have limits. I mean, all this stuff is, you know, a matter of balance. You know, you don't want to have no limits, but you don't want to have too strict limits. You know, you don't want to just write and push through, even though you can't write anything. But you also don't want to, you know, stay in the plotting process forever. You know, yeah. it's all about finding that balance. And with this, I feel like uh, I need to, in, the, in this plotting I want to do this week, um, kind of adding to the plot, uh, an outline. I want to um, incorporate some of those new ideas. For instance, I came up with um, um, a, a new a new beginning to the story that I think will um, accomplish what I want to accomplish in the beginning of the story a little bit better, introducing the characters in the world and that kind of stuff. I, I'm not going to delete anything I've written, and I think I can still use all of it so far. Yeah, um, and it still serves the purposes of sort of some of the 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 you know the first part of the story, but maybe not not just that first chapter, maybe, um, and uh, it, it incorporates a little bit different ideas than I had, had considered before, um, especially sort of regarding the sort of the religion on the island. Um, kind of had some spontaneous world building. Um, actually, sitting in church the other day. Because mm -hmm. I was thinking about like religious festivals and how that might be a good opportunity to uh, introduce kind of that character's attitude towards religion because I had plan on making that a pretty uh, integral part of the story. Um, uh, kind of this like not fall festival, but like harvest festival or something, something like that. Yeah. Um, and kind of contrasting it with, you know, the way they used to celebrate it and now the way they're forced to because, you know, they have to include all these other gods because there's like this this pantheon that, you know, this all-inclusive pantheon that this Im sort of empire makes everybody adopt. And you can still worship your god, but you have to also acknowledge all these other ones too. Right. Thing. Um, so that was kind of an idea I had that you know, wasn't really open to as much uh, before. Um, yeah, because it wouldn't have been a part of the, the original story. And it wasn't just the setting, too. It was also, like, the events I had in mind for the beginning that all revolve around this dive bell thing they do, you know, going down and salvaging this wreck. Um, and I had that yeah. just so stuck in my mind that that's what they do in the beginning of the story, you know, from the very beginning that I yeah. kind of closed myself off to anything else happening, um, which was not so good. Have you, have you experienced anything like that so far, John? Um, not lately. Uh, I'm... My story is a lot less based on anything uh, rigid. It's more just the story that I invented, right, mostly yeah. beginning to end. The culture is the only thing that's kind of based on anything, and that is, I've, I've never really adhered too much to one thing. I don't want it to seem too much like one thing. Uh, and so I've always been very open to sort of letting it be influenced by several different sources. Um, that's an article I want to write for the website soon, by the way. It's one about world-building cultures. And things specific to that, finding ways to incorporate history, incorporate original ideas without being over the top, things like pop culture and, and, and stuff like that where you can grab from stuff but not make it too, too ham-fisted, I guess. But uh, not really. that's not really been something I've struggled with. For me, it's more just letting myself make something that's super original. Um, I, I, I don't have anything I'm hanging to strictly, that's, at least not specifically, but I do find myself gravitating towards certain things more than others. Certain things that I've seen more than things that I can come up with myself. I see. Um, like the magic system I have is pretty original now, but when it started it, it was a lot, lot less original. It had a lot to do with um, several different sources, notably Aragon and also a uh, 
a series of books by called Septimus Heap, I think. Oh man, yeah, that, I forgot about the, that. I forgot. I don't remember. What the, that's not what the books were called. I don't think, but um, they that there's a it's a sort of a young adults series, but um, they have an interesting magic system in there where I think you have magic aptitude, but you can't do any magic really unless you have like. Um, sort of a talisman and that allows you to do a certain spell and it was kind of like that originally I was thinking about that but then I let myself get a little more creative but that's kind of the thing I've struggled with more than uh, struggling not to adhere to a single event or, or timeline or yeah whatever, and that you. depends on what you've based your story on or, or if you've right, based it right, on anything right. um, and, and kind of your it doesn't even have to be something that's based on something it could be your original idea you're tied too much to that that's like, true like yeah. I said like I had an opening in mind of the story and uh, and I you know kind of closed myself off to any other options um, and then when I came back to it after a couple of weeks, I was like, oh, actually, this might be a better way to open the story and kind of yeah. accomplish what I need to accomplish there. Um, so it could be something you based it on. It could be just your own ideas that you're tied too closely to and haven't, you know, taken that step back and open yourself to other options, which can be good if you're trying to really focus and just get through it like we wanted to. Um, but yeah, maybe after, after a few weeks of writing, maybe, you know, take a step back, maybe take a break for a week or something. And, you know, maybe it's good to kind of go through that process of, um, reevaluating and kind of being like, okay, what have I done so far? You know, where do I want to go? How am I yeah. doing so far and getting there? That kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And like we were talking about last time we did the podcast, kind of keeping burnout away and keeping it right. from taking you over. Like that might be a good tool for that as well. Yeah. Just every now and again, stopping and kind of reevaluating where you're at and where you want to go and, and, and refocusing maybe. Yeah, totally. I think that's uh, probably a healthy thing to do. Um, in there's... anything, not just, not of just course. writing even. Of course, yeah. So yeah, we're still on our mission, uh, our mission to uh, finish a first draft of a novel and eventually uh, an entire novel. Um, we're just trying to figure out the most efficient, most you know, helpful way of getting there. And uh, it's kind of a, another experiment <laughs> on, on that you know, path of trying to figure that out for ourselves, you know? Yeah. So, the most uh, efficient way of getting there short of quitting everything and being full-time writers. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Because that would be much faster. For sure, yeah. And there's there's some crazy things going on in, in my life, I know, in the next few months probably that I'll probably uh, update all you guys on. It's all exciting stuff, but uh, it's definitely oh, yeah. pretty crazy. Um, and then I know you're super busy. You know, we don't, don't have all the time in the world to write, but I'm going to try to get at least two good days um, of sitting down for a few hours each and uh, working on my outline and plot and, uh, and really fleshing it out a little bit more and uh, brainstorming yeah. some ideas for how I can connect the pieces I've made so far uh, a bit more intuitively and, and more fluidly, I guess. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Do you have any uh, days this week where you think you'll be able to kind of sit down and do that? Yeah, I think I'm going to – my goal right now is to set one day a week – where I have multiple hours to focus on writing. Yeah, I really need multiple um, hours too. I can't just sit down for like an hour yeah. and do stuff usually. And I have, yeah, and the, the sort of standard business hours schedule doesn't allow for many days where you can just sit down and write for a long period of time. Yeah, John has a real uh, job. I have a quote-unquote real job. Um, but one day a week where I am I can focus on writing for a few hours and get a lot done and then try to write at least some a couple of the days of the week yeah but but really have i need to have a time where i really focus on it and that's what i'm going to try to do nice are you also going to work on um outline kind of um fleshing yeah, out yeah, this yeah. week i definitely need to do that for the the next two chapters i want to write i want to get those fully fully done one is one is not done at all the one i'm trying to write right now that's not plotted. because it was all a new I idea that because it's new because it was a new idea okay, and yeah. i never actually stopped to and incorporated it. it yeah yeah and i know where it is in the story it goes a little bit before what i've written already in between some other stuff but it's not plotted i need to plot it and then the next chapter is in my plot but it's not super well planned out yet um and i get to learn from this experience and go ahead and do that before i try to write it and not just like those opening chapters too because i've 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 i was thinking about this yesterday too like I need to go into my third act and really flesh that out. And, yeah, and that was one out thing. What's happening there? Because uh, again, we've talked about this before, you know. But that's all being set up right now by what we're writing now. And yeah. part of why I get frustrated is because I feel like there's no weight to the chapters I'm writing in the beginning of the story. Like they're not setting anything up, and I want them to. And so maybe I would be able to alleviate some of that frustration by feeling like I'm, you know, at least to a small degree you know, or in small ways 
setting up something for the third, third act or, or, you know, introducing characters that yeah. I know are going to be important later, but I haven't thought of many of those yet. And so I end up feeling like what I'm writing at the beginning is inconsequential and just kind of blah, you know, just stuff happening, you know? Yeah. And during this, this is a little bit of a separate thing, but during this period where we haven't written uh, that much, particularly over the last couple of weeks, I've kind of been struggling mentally with like, I'm seeing in, in various media things, um, different characters that are really well fleshed out and really well like designed. And there's a lot of different as like facets to their character. And I, I get like self-conscious about my characters that are in there so far. I'm like, Oh, they're not good enough yet. I'm trying to like <laughs> keep all that at bay and tell myself, yeah, but we can fix that later. Like that's not, that's not that big of a deal right now. We can, we can make that work better later. We just need to get the story. And, and out. also to be forgiving with yourself, realizing this is your first ever story you're trying to write. And that that's it's, true. It's not going to be amazing. Probably the first time you finish the first draft. Um, right. Right. It's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of, you know, re- refining and, you know, test reading and all that kind of stuff to really get to where you want it to be. And ultimately, you know, think about who, you know, your characters, you know, you can, it's good to like read other characters, people's char- stories and characters and get ideas from them and be like, Ooh, I wonder why this works so well and that kind of thing. But it's definitely, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's definitely kind of a trap to be like, Oh man, this is so good. I'm never going to be able to do it that good. <laughs> oh man. I'm, oh, I don't even want to try. My anymore. story sucks. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. Yeah, which <laughs> not which, great. Which we all know, but you know, it's it's hard oh, yeah. not to do it still. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. But yeah, I mean, being forgiving with yourself is a big part of starting anything. You know, if you're learning an instrument for the right. first time, you're gonna sound terrible. <laughs> I know because I have a saxophone. I can attest to this. That I'm trying to learn, and it sounds awful. <laughs> and I was there when Vito was learning to play violin. Yes, you were. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. <laughs> I've we hand- all hated it. I handed John and our sister Josie uh, my violin this past week in uh, during Thanksgiving. And they sounded awful. <laughs> but who was better? Actually, Josie was. I know. I, th- I was hoping you would lie, though. <laughs> I don't know why. You, you're actually the better musician in general. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a thing where, like, if you're – like, I play guitar more than Josie does. Maybe because I'm so much – so accustomed to yeah, that. I, I shouldn't say better. More The more experienced, I think, is probably the better, yeah. better way to phrase it. Because I know she's going to be listening to this later. Womp womp. <laughs> At least I didn't say it. <laughs> I know. Now she's gonna. Be I get. To be, I get to be the favorite brother. More experience is what I mean. That's that makes more sense. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that was so. Yeah, way to call me out, by the way, and my lack of violin skills. Well, I mean, you know, you, I did ask. Would you claim to have violin skills? Oh no. Okay, so no, no problem. I can play it okay if I don't use the bow. <laughs> that's actually kind of like true a, like a baby guitar like a little baby guitar or a mandolin um, which is the same mandolin. thing anyway <laughs> but yes I'm uh, looking forward to working on that this week um, uh, John as well I think that's going to be oh, helpful yeah. we'll share our results with you guys uh, next week um, yeah that's, uh, that's all I really wanted to talk about today just to kind of get back in the oh, swing yeah. of things uh, did you have anything you wanted to talk about in terms of the website that shall not be named by me at least oh the the, the reddits yes uh, I, yeah. So you know how like the last couple of weeks I haven't posted a Reddit question because I keep forgetting to. Well, also we weren't doing the podcast for a couple of weeks. Well, before that. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't forget. Okay. We posted our last episode and then like the day, next day or whatever, I went on Reddit and I got on the fantasy writer subreddit because a question I wanted to ask was how do you keep burnout at bay? Now, if you looked for my Reddit question and didn't find it, that's because the lovely moderators at the Fantasy Writers subreddit decided that my post didn't have enough fantasy context and removed it, and I didn't look. So there are a handful of responses that got in there before its removal, which I will go over, but if you didn't find it, that's why. I apologize for that. Uh, I will make sure to follow all the rules in the future. So if any (laughs) of the moderators from the subreddit are listening, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The gods of Reddit Uh, are not happy with you. The overlords. Um... Vito, if you had to guess, what would you say a moderator of of a Reddit group does? I would say they monitor all the posts and try to determine how they fit into the theme of the subreddit and kind of make sure everything's kind of cool. You get a gold star, Vito. I'm proud of you. Oh, yay. I just know what a moderator of a thing is. (laughs) (laughs) That's not to be Reddit. (laughs) That's fair. Okay, so (laughs) this guy goes by the name of Action A Go-Go Baby. 
Okay. Uh, this is why I want you guys to message me directly with your names, because I like saying real names better. Um, <laughs> Although it's kind of fun to say whatever it is. Action a go go, baby. Action a go go, baby. Yes. Uh, so, we, again, the question was how do you avoid burnout when you're writing? Um, because that's what we've been talking about, and we've kind of experiencing not burnout, but sort of a, a fading of the the original spark that got us really into our stories. And frustration when things get hard, you know. Yeah, as, yeah. As is natural. The temptation to kind of slow down or, or give up. Um, and this guy said he he recommends creating a new character in a new part of the world or tell a story from a random character's perspective, not necessarily as a part of the story, but just something to get yourself. Yeah, you know, a creative challenge to get you back into things and, and, yeah, and wanting to and write Yeah, and almost more. like a window into another part of the world that you can kind of see and then incorporate elements of into the main part of it. Or maybe incorporate that, too. You never know if you like that yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I do that sometimes with the same characters, but, like, I'll zoom or I'll go back in time or something. Or I'll uh, yeah. go forward in time or I'll, you know, just put them in a random spot that I think they might do something interesting in and, and just yeah. see what happens, you know. Yeah, he also suggests... Uh, describing your world to a friend and getting them to make a character in the world as if it was like a D and D thing. Oh wow! Um, and then playing it with them, playing through some of your story with your friend as sort of a a character who's walking the story along with you, um, which I think is a fascinating idea. Like that's really interesting. Bye, everybody. <laughs> show is sponsored in part by audible visit worldbuildersanonymous.com slash audible to check out what the guys are listening to right now and to receive a free audiobook